Okay, guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how we can get particles to emanate from objects, whether they be uh, uh, cubes, planes, curves, anything like that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do a few things. Let's make a few different objects. Let's make a plane right there. I'll turn on shaded mode so we can see it. I'll go to my attribute editor and just... Uh, zero out their position. I'll bring that over here. We can create maybe a uh, let's do a sphere. I'll zero that out. Alright. And let me go over to side view. Let me draw out a curve. I'm just going to do a simple curve. obsess over it too much. Alright. I think that'll be more than enough. Is there anything else I missed? If there is, I'll go back and create them later. And we can get into what's going on here. I'll lift this plane up for a second. Alright. So, we can emit particles from objects. So to do that, we're going to make sure we're in Dynamics. I'm going to select my plane and I'm going to go to Particles and bring up the extra options for emit from object. Let me show you that again. Particles, emit from object. Boom. And we'll just go to reset settings to make sure we're all on the same page. And we'll go to create. All right. One thing you'll notice is whenever I go to my outliner and I have my plane here, I have an emitter nested underneath my plane. So just kind of like in rigging, anytime something's nested under something in my outliner, when I move my plane, the emitter will come with it. Okay, but it's more than just uh, nesting. The, the particle emitter also kind of takes some of the attributes of my plane, and I'll show you how that works right now. So let's go to my uh, attribute editor. So I just double click the attribute editor button right here, and I'm going to go to my plane here, expanded my outliner, and select emitter one. We should be pretty familiar with our emitter options by now. Let's go to, well, let's first, let's just see what happens whenever I press play here. Let's go back to my emitter and let's change it to directional. All right. And let's see what happens. Okay. Let me set my scene to a thousand. Make sure I'm playing back in real time. There we go. So what I'm getting, that's hard to see right now. Alright. Emitter. Let me bring up some of these. Like so. So my directional is going in that way. Min and max distance. What we're going to do now is we're going to change this directional and let's make it surface. And immediately we see something cool happening. Unfortunately, it's not letting me highlight the particles for this, so we're just going to have to uh, use the best <laughs> eyes we can on this. But if you can see, I'm getting these little gray little specks emitting from the surface of my plane here. So the way I did that, we'll just start over from the beginning. I'll get rid of that particle system. I select my object. I go to particles, emit from object, select my emitter one here in my outliner. Remember it's going to be nested under my, my object plane. And we'll turn emitter type from omni to surface and pretty much we can tweak all the settings that we uh, we're looking at. I think the only new ones here will be tangent speed and normal speed. These just kind of further allow you to edit the uh, speed here. But the most important thing to take away here is that now we have particles emitted all across the surface of my plane here. Okay. Let's change this value to a thousand. And it's, for, it's important to note that the direction that these particles are going depends on the normal direction of my plane here. So if I turn, go to lighting and turn off two-sided lighting, 
nothing looks like it's happened but when I go to the underneath here my normals are pointing up so I can see that since my normals aren't pointing downwards I get a black face here so the particles are on the surface mode attached to an object are always going to travel in the direction of the normal of your surface here let's apply that to a sphere here and see what we get so I'll select my sphere I'll go to particles emit from object don't just hit create emitter we want to emit from the object All right. let's expand my sphere to I have emitter 2 here let's change this to surface and let's hit play immediately I'm getting particles emanating from the surface of my sphere here yeah it's a little hard to see ah there we go you see a little bit better now maybe I can change the uh, color see now all right uh, even though it's a little hard to see maybe I can change their color there we go I'm going to the Lambert tab inside this particle I'll get there in a second but for right now let's just go ahead and make this like a bright green or something there now we can see this better I'll show how we did I'll show us how we did that when I get to the last part of this lecture when I talk, start talking about particle uh, attributes all right so let me just go back in time there we go. Looks like my attribute window got a little weird. So now when I uh, emit my particles, we can see what's going on a little bit easier here. Notice how there's no particles emitting from inside the sphere here. See, no particles coming from the center there. They're all emitting from the surface of my object here. No big deal. Just a little bit of surface. Let me see if I can fix that. Oh, my attribute editor is all messed up. I'll tell you what, I'll just drag out a little window here. We'll just live with it for a second. Better than restarting the lecture. There we go. Alright. Attribute window, you're making me mad. Oh, my oh, there we go. Now I got access to my time slider again. Alright. So, surface, very, very powerful. It always travels in the normal direction of your faces. Remember, our faces can only face one direction. And then the direction they're facing is the way the particles will start flowing off of surfaces here. All right, let's talk about one more kind of emitter, and that's a curve emitter. So it's important to note, if I don't change any of these settings, like, uh, let's say, you know, surface or what, whatever, uh, let's say I... Uh, just leave it at directional see what happens what you can see is the particles will emanate from every single vert on this sphere okay Zach's trying to message me uh, particles will emanate from the vertices of my sphere here that means even on the back side since it's traveling in the X direction they're gonna emit straight from the verts and you can approximate the same kind of effect that the surface has. Let's say if we go to uh, Omni and hit play, we can kind of see we get the same kind of effect, but now they're coming. You'll see that they'll at the very beginning they'll start from the verts there. So it's a little bit of a different effect, but it gets kind of the same basic idea. So that's the difference between Omni and surface see it's picking those surfaces and it's important also to note that if it's on uh, omni or directional 100 particles per second each vertex is creating 100 particles per second but if you change it to surface then the whole surface of the sphere is creating 100 particles per second that's why you see more points on the directional and omni rather than on the surface so those are some important differences between the two there alright so let's look at my curve and you know you can do some pretty cool things too let's uh, do a, a little bit of animation on my plane here so I'm going to go from I'll keyframe at frame one and then I'll animate my plane kind of doing like an arc or something I don't know got a 
that'll be cool enough, I guess. So if I set it back to zero, look what we get. Uh, <laughs> okay, I can see my animation so slow, but I'm animating this object in time, and it's acts actually, you know, dictating where the particles are emanating from. So the ones over here. <laughs> I were emanated from when it was flat and then we have something like this so I, we can kind of create these nice little weird wavy patterns with it probably not the best example to show there I'll scrunch up the time slider here you can see something a little bit more severe here there we go I've created an arc of color it's amazing it's, it's glorious so that's the power of emitting from polygonal shapes we can also do that with curves. So I'm going to select my curve, uh, go to particles, emit from object. And curves are nice because curves aren't rendered and they can still be animated like the plane. So the plane would have been rendered, but our curve won't. So if we emit from object here, let's look and see how many uh, control vertices we have. See, they're emitting from the control vertice. That's our normal omni setting there. So let's go to my curve and select the emitter 3 for it. Let's change it to curve. Okay, we're not going to do surface because curves have no surfaces, but curves are curves. So it only makes sense that we can now shoot our particles from every single area on my curve here. And just like the plane here, I can take my curve, do some crazy animation with him. Let me do a center pivot here. Maybe pull him way out here. Just do some crazy stuff, I guess. And then you'll see what happens when we do this. Now, I did some crazy animation for my curve. Oh, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's start over. So now we're getting uh, nice little motion trails for our particles to follow. Creating some nice visual elements here. You can do a lot if you get creative with this type of workflow. All right, great. So surface emanates from the surface of objects. Curve emanates from the overall curve of something. Um, I think what we can do now is let's just go and create a new particle fill. Just create a new emitter. We'll bring it out over here. And if we open up the attribute editors, there's one more type of emitter we can talk about. And that's a volume emitter. Uh, volume emitters, they do, scale will now affect our emitter here. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to have particles that only are emitted within this volume here. So it's kind of an easy visual way to approximate, you know, what particles are. <laughs> Look at this. I'm going to change the color of this particle system. Well, I guess they're all tied together a little bit. Let me go over here, emitter 4, I'll just move it over even more so those other parts will get in the way. See, only particles will uh, be created within this box here. So you can play around the different uh, attributes there too. And I think speed's relying on how big the box is and how many particles per second you're getting. So let's do 500 per second. So that's a lot. All right, great. So that's I'll just get rid of that emitter. You can't emit from in volumes, but you know, you can get creative and do the same thing with, you know, the omni and min max, all that good stuff. Um so we have three objects doing their thing, going crazy. Let's look at some of the uh different ways we can I'll just get rid of some of these right here so we don't clog up the scene. I think particle 2 is what we want to keep. Yeah. So now we have my sphere emitting. Let's look at some of the different attributes for our particles themselves. We're not going to get too deep into it, but you know, it'll be a little bit of uh, a, a window into the soul here. Um, here we have just the basic transform attributes of particle two. Particle two shape is the important tab here, and in fact, particle two shape is uh, a tab you can also get to within your emitter. So if you're in your emitter on the uh, attribute editor, 
here's my attributes for the actual emitter here's my tab for particle 2 shape so that's just another way to get to the settings that matter uh, let's just look at some of the more important ones real quick alright so I'm in particle 2 shape uh, I can get to it remember from the outliner here or I can get to it from emitter or particle it's up to you the shape is what you're looking for alright let's make that smaller um, max count uh, I'm, I'm assuming that negative one means uh, infinity they're going to be there's no limit on how many there can be if you set it to zero then <laughs> no particles are going to be created if you set it to one what's going on here I just minimize that if you set it to one then only one particle is going to be made there he is he's our lone particle see him and that's the only thing that's going to be made within this or you can just say okay I want there to be a hundred particles and then I just want it done so now you have a hundred particles being made yeah I think that was a number a little high compared to what I wanted to show let's do thirty particles so after our emitter makes thirty particles it's done no more particles are going to be made so that's the max count of that all right I'm gonna set that back to negative one that way we have infinity particles so negative one very important to remember that for max count now we can also set the lifespan of our particles so they kind of disappear after a certain amount of time live forever is default they'll exist and travel forever um, a constant means it doesn't mean it lives forever it means that we can set the lifespan to let's say three seconds and every particle is constantly going to disappear after three seconds so this kind of not only lets you kind of control the lifespan it also lets you kind of control the shape of your particle field see see how they're just kind of hovering within this kind of cloud this kind of gives you the ability to kind of create like a cloudy effect around something without the cloud expanding into infinity and kind of getting out of control here all right so let's do random range so I can say I want my lifespan to be three seconds let's just keep it at three seconds and then I want my lifespan random to be I don't know let's see what 10 does so what we get is a really varied uh, field here some particles die soon some don't let's do one second just playing around with these values two and two So what we get is a field that kind of goes around the sphere, but it's not all constant. You know, some particles live longer than others. You know, some with a setting of 10, uh, they just live longer. It's more random. It opens up a wider range here. If we can really, we can really nail this down. Let's do like 10 seconds with a lifespan random of 10. What we get are some particles that die off rather soon and some particles that just keep going what if we change this to one I think what you'll find the lower the the random speeds the less likely you know you're gonna have variation so a high variation let's say like 50 in our random we're gonna have a lot more variation in the lifespan of my particles here but you know constant's a nice little way to control that without with being able to zoom in and hone in exactly how long you want and let's do something crazy here let's set our lifespan to like three seconds and let's set our max count at 20 let's see how these two values work together what we see here is we have our particle system doing like puffs and it puffs out again and it puffs out again because what's going on is every particle it makes lives for three seconds when they disappear it makes 20 more we can do the same thing here 100 particles they disappear 100 particles let's maybe make it down to 50 our max count down to 50 let's see what we're doing let's start it over so it's like a puff and if we increase our, our uh, increase our lifespan 
we can see this effect even more. So every five seconds, 50 particles are going to be made and they're going to fly out. After five seconds, they'll disappear and a new 50 will be made. So that's max count and lifespan working together. It's almost like puffs of smoke coming out of like a chimney or something. I don't know. All right, cool. Um, and there's a few things over here. Time attributes. Uh, time attributes is important. Let's say you want to start your uh, simulation uh, with all the all particles already emitted, and you just want to kind of get into it without you know them being created on frame one. Well, if you set your start frame to negative 50, okay, and we'll rewind that. And let's go back and uh, set this back to negative one. Okay, great. I don't want it, I don't want that to mess up with the kind of thing I'm showing you here. So what we see now is with my animation stopped and I go back to frame one, I already have these particles created. So on frame one, it's almost like the simulation has been playing for 50 seconds. And in fact, that's what happens. Maya goes ahead and figures out, okay, after 50 seconds, they're already like this. So they start on negative 50 on the timeline, but they're already out there for you. So it's just a nice way to kind of get your particles already working for you. Uh, other, th other These other things, uh, collision attributes, a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, we won't cover. Really more technical, more intricate. Uh, the only other thing I want to show is how can we get different shapes? Do we just want points all the time? Uh, probably not. So what we can do, if it's not already uh, expanded for you, we'll just keep going down and we'll find render attributes in our particle shape too. And here we can change kind of the look and shape of our points here. Um, we can actually do numbers. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and change my uh, time attributes. I'll just make it start on frame one per the default. So I've changed it to numeric and numeric is a cool way because every time a particle is created it's assigned a number. So there's particle one, there's particle 102, there's a particle 435, uh, oh there's 702. So this is a nice way to kind of see how many particles are being created at what point you know particles are you know, where's my hundredth particle created? When and where is it? Well, numeric's kind of a way to hone in on that. Pretty neat. Uh, points is what we're used to, just little points of light or points of data. Street or spheres kind of create these nice blobby spheres. So that's pretty cool. Let me go back to particle shape. Okay, so I just lost my uh, attribute so I'm gonna go down to particle 2 in the outliner select particle shape and I'll just come back down to render attributes here in my list and now we're back where we were uh, you can do sprites so if you had like a certain transparency like you wanted to do like uh, kapow signs or a little cartoony explosion symbols if you had a transparent image of that like a PNG they could be emitting all these little pow symbols and stuff like that and you would just assign that to the Lambert here we'll get to that in a second all right, so sprites are cool. Streaks are really cool. They kind of are like little comets or sparks. And let me zoom in on that. They're pretty small, but uh, little mini comets come flying out at you. They're good for uh, sparks, rain, uh, anything that have a tail on them, like a comet's tail. All right, great. And uh, blobby surfaces getting a little bit more technical uh, clouds kinda have a transparency on them it's pretty nice and there you have like a little energy field or uh, some snowflakes or something tubes give you even more control over what kind of shape you want getting a little crazy but the best thing to do is to work in kind of points when you're first starting out they don't take too much to calculate and then you can kind of tweak them after that so here's our emitter. This is pretty familiar, right? So our particle even has our emitter tab on it. Same thing over here. There's our my emitter too. There's that. So we can even say, oh, there's surface, curve, volume. All this stuff is familiar. Uh, particle cloud. Kind of gives you a little bit of a, uh, a tweaking on uh, <laughs> if you had a cloud shape, I assume. Kind of gives you a... Uh, control over what that color is going to look like I guess when you render it out at 
but you know what? Where's my Lambert? Ah, I see what happens. Uh, whenever I changed my material to cloud over here in my shape, it, it changes my Lambert to particle cloud one. It goes ahead and it makes a custom material for me. So maybe if I turn this back to points, I see it's going to still have that cloud there. Let's go ahead and remake this then. I'm going to get that Lambert back so we're all on the same page here. Go to particles, emit from object. Okay. Go to my emitter, open up my attribute editors. Ah, looks like it's going to keep keep that cloud up. Let's just make a new scene. Maybe that'll fix it. I want my Lambert back. And then maybe we can talk about the cloud on another lecture or something. I'm just trying to get it basic. So let's make a sphere. Let's create particles from object. Let's bring up my outliner. Go to panels. Save layouts. There we go. Attribute editor. There we go. There's my Lambert back. This is what's going to allow me to give it different flavor and color. I'll set my timeline back up to a thousand. Alright. So right now we kind of got it gray. And this will kind of give you the different colors you want within your uh, scene there. Go to emitter one. There we go. So Lambert's kind of the material it assigns to your particle. So if I wanted to assign this to a red, and I wanted to play it for like a few seconds, then I'll stop it, and I go to render. What we want to do when we render these things is be in Maya hardware. Let me kind of get the screen a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to the drop down menu, go to Maya hardware, hit my action button, and there's my red particle field. I can store that right there, hit play again, stop it, and I'll render it again. And you can see my field's gotten bigger. All right, so that's what our Lambert does for that. All right, so we've talked about emitting from objects, and we've talked about uh, particle attributes. From here, you guys should be able to create some pretty interesting effects and whatnot. Um, let me quickly talk about gravity, too. Uh, gravity is in fields, so what we'll do is we'll play it for a little bit. Let me select my particles right here, All right, and I'll just go to fields, create gravity, and look what happens. Gravity pulls on my particles. Now we have just a huge streaming of red little dots going on. Let me get back to uh, home right here. Alright, so gravity has its own kind of attributes here. And I'll go over. There's only a few ones we're talking about here. Uh, our gravity field right here. Um, magnitude, attenuation, and direction are the three things we're going to be talking about. Uh, rule of thumb, always keep this 9-8. Uh, so if you want 9.8 meters per second, that's the default. If you want it not so powerful, just move your decimal spot. Leave it at 9.8. That's going to create the more realistic uh, you know, meters per second equation. And now we don't have such a huge pull on all those points right there. And if we go 0 0.098, now we have even less of an uh, uh, attraction on them. And as it gets over here, gravity's going to keep trying to pull on it. And we can see we don't quite get <laughs> we don't quite get a sphere. We can see there's eventually a pull on this kind of going on. But 0.98 might be better right here. We can definitely see gravity going to work here. Attenuation, to be honest, the higher the attenuation, the less of uh, effect gravity has. So with point, uh, 0.98, we see with my attenuation high, we're not getting that same drag. If I pull it down, there we go. We can see gravity starting to pull it, but not as hard as if it was set on zero. So maybe we can see this in effects in real time. So with my attenuation at zero, we see it going straight down. If I pull it up, 
we can see my gravity field not really caring too much about gravity it's expanding upwards and everything's nice I'll set it back at zero I want gravity to have a full effect what if I set my y direction to positive one instead of negative one anti-gravity so that's the anti-gravity button right there you can also make your gravity do some crazy things like instead of go down you can make it go uh, to the left or to the right <laughs> so we're going to the right now gravity is all out of whack so that's gravity for you you can do some really cool things gravity is just a way to ensure that you're getting some really realistic pulls and effects on something so if you have like rain or snowflakes going on you can apply a gravity field to that particle and you can get some nice effects alright that does it for particles play around with it get comfortable with it and let's see what you can create